Hey people, when I was making this movie on King Solomon the Six Finger Giant, you know, old Jedediah, I had Googled Jedediah meaning origin, and I often go to images and it speeds the search up quick. You know, everybody's got the same thing, I can see it real easy. But I run up on this thole in there, and I didn't understand why it was in Jedediah. You know, this is thole. This is a row lock. You drop these two pins in there and, and put your oar between there. So that's what's pushing the boat. When you pull on that oar, that's where the fulcrum is. The force pushing on the fulcrum to move the boat. And it's also these handles on this old seath. This is the word thole. And it means to tolerate. It's where your word tolerate come from. To suffer through it. The thole to tolerate. And this old letter here, this is the, the TH. It's also the second meaning of the Hebrew letter D. It's one of the double letters that they seem to have forgotten the meaning to. But it's the ability to bear, endure something, you know, to tolerate, endurance, patience. It's where your word toll come from. When you go through a toll, you know, they forced you between to make sure everybody doesn't rush at once, you know, you're forced down into a little choke. It's also the old Latin tholus of rotunda, a dome, uncertain but possibly causing it with the thalamos, the chamber, the inner chamber. You know, you're chambered up between, the oars chambered between the, the rowlock. But nothing I read on that page could show me how this came in the search of Jedediah. I read every word on the page. I went all the way to the bottom. I read every word. And in no place could I find Jedediah in there. So I googled Jedi meaning fulcrum and got poor results. Not a whole lot. So I had to break down and look into this Jedi symbol for the Jedi warriors. You know it appears to be you know wings with a spire with a star on it you know, it kind of looks like what's on top of your Christmas tree the star of Bethlehem they call it and you see something similar to this on all the different churches and mosques it looks mostly like this one that they're hanging up on this uh, the Spanish Catholic Church but if you look at the receipt you, know, you can see a goat's hoof in here so I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but I know Jedi is plural. A Jedus would be singular, and a Jedi is plural. And they use a lot of these Hebrew words in the movie. You know, Ben Solo, One Son, and Obi-Wan Kenobi to, to serve the white priest. You know, Wan meaning a person's complexion, appearance, pale, white. Not a lot of information, so I checked out this Jedi disambiguation. And the biggest clues there was this Al Jedi the double star system in Capricorn, you know, the goat. You know, the, the star in the, in the goat. And the D-Jedi, the fictional ancient Egyptian magician. And they say fictional because they've only found the writing in one place, and the stories more than they can understand. And it comes from the time of Khufu. And it starts just like Star Wars, you know, a long time ago. And the truth and falsehood cannot be distinguished here. But it says there's a the commoner named De Jedi living in De Jed Sniferu. You know, you can see that word M from the Nefer from the Neferus. He's a simple citizen but hundred and ten years old. He eats 500 loaves of bread and a shoulder of beef and he drinks 100 jars of beer. And so that tells me that this Jedi is plural. That's not one man. You know, that's the warriors, the keepers. You know, this 100 jars is probably a 100 men. You know, between them five, five loaves of bread a day. And this special force of the keepers, you know, has been around for 110 years. And he arranges his journeys during the first month of the Shmo. 
the Shmo season. You know, that's the the word they'll give in Hebrew, and he heard. You know, that's the the spring season. You know, Easter. And he invites along with him an old man whose condition is equal to someone who lives from age and someone who sleeps till dawn, free of illness and wheezing. For aging is the time of dying. You know, when you get old, that's when you start dyeing your hair. So this um, old, old Jedi, you know, is an optical double star. Looking at two stars, that's why it's so many legs. Constellation of the goat. Come from the Arabic old Jedi, the, the Billy Goat, or kid. You know, in Capricorn over here, you know, you have Saturn, the old man with the seethe. You know, Saturn sits over here at, the, at this fulcrum. You know, the head of it is here. You know, as the sun moves around, you know, he steps in here, and the head is here. And then Aquarius steps in, He's sitting at the fulcrum, where Easter is here, between Taurus and Aries. And old Jedi, he eats on a, a side of beef, which is this old Alpha Capricorni, the second star of the ox in the Chinese astronomy. You know, he's here eating on the side of beef, where the Chinese were seeing this as an ox instead of a, a goat in Aquarius. They were seeing the ox here. So he sits here eating on this side of beef. You know, that's where Saturn's sitting today. It's sitting in its home in Capricorn, Aquarius. You know, Saturn sitting here, his, his home is in Capricorn, Aquarius between the row locks. You can see Capricorn and Aquarius. Aquarius is the Q, the, the center, and Capricorn is the P, which is also the PH. Both of these are the PH or the Q. So this ox was the second month in the Chinese zodiac. You know zodiac is coming from the ancient Greek term referring to a circle of little animals. You know, in the Greek, in uh, this word, they said loincloths, this is peri, zomata. And if you translate this zomata, you know, it comes out to animals, you know, around the animals. You know, the, the animals are the zoo in the day to give, the animals of the day to give. You know, the rat comes first, and then the ox, and that was according to the the great race held by a great deity to determine which creatures in which order would be the namesake of the 12 year cycle. It was run and swim and the finishing line being across a great river. And so the rat jumped on the ox's back to get across the river. But when he got across the river the, the rat jumped off his nose and beat him across the finish line. And this Chinese zodiac also works in the sexagenary cycle. I talked about in that movie of Solomon's a six finger giant. So the, the difference in the Asian astrology and our astrology is we look at where the sun's at as our sign, but that's where your word sin comes from. You see it in this Hebrew word for Beijing, China. The word China is sin. That's the sinners. And that's the moon. Their astrology had to do with where the stars that you would see at night, not the stars that you couldn't see where the sun was at. And so sin is the moon. And so wherever the moon's full at, you know, that's when the moon's full, it's going to tell you where the sun is opposite of it. So that's why their astrology reads different, because they were the sinners. They worked off this lunar calendar, the 28 mansions. And this is the 28 mansions around the outside. And it's the same as the, the tortoise shell. You know, you have your 28 around the outside, and then you have your four seasons of three months, and then you had your, your center, the 13. And that's where this, this letter Q, this is the same letter used in the, in the spelling of China. And it's where our letter Q comes from, meaning the center, the fifth direction. You, know, you have three months in each season here. 
28 days, and then the Q, the 13th center. And then that was improved in the Indian astronomy. It's called the Nakshatra. And that's the ones the Indians came in, as our fact said, after the flood to teach astrology, astronomy. You know, at the time of the construction of the Tower of Babel, you know, after the flood, Indian of the race of Arphaxad made his appearance, a wise man, astronomer. And it was he who first instructed the Indians in the science of astronomy. You know, Shem was a hundred years old when he procreated, pro first created Arphaxad the second year after the flood. You know, that would be in Genesis 11, around the Tower of Confusion. You know, confusion coming from Confucius. You know, Confucius, he lived on top of the mountain. You know, if you had a question, you had to crawl up the top of the mountain. And he always answered your question with a question, to, and it left you confused, you know. When the English got there, they said, who's that on top of the mountain? Uh, I don't know. He confuses us. He confuses us. Thus, the Tower of Confucius, the Tower of Confusion, when everything was changed. You know, that's why they, they don't read the old Chinese. They can't read it. It was changed, too, at the Tower of Confucius. And that's also where your golden rule comes from, was Confucius. Do unto others as you want done to yourself. In his writings, he talked about the the elements of the afterlife and the views concerning heaven. And so I know y'all enjoyed this, you know, but I didn't go into the, the ancient language a lot. And, uh, and the reason I do that is because if I don't, you know, I'm just somebody bl blabbing. And I like to show where I get this from. I get it from the ancient writings. I don't dream all this up. But all these ancient writers, you know, they wrote in song and poetry everything rhymed you had to make it enjoyable for the people to, to read it or to even listen to it and plus you know when the words rhyme it, it gives you more thought into where the origin of the words come from uh, like I was saying in a in an early movie about a Jacob I believe it was that movie about um, about the secrets of Stonehenge where it was talking about the hinge that they built when he had a covenant with Laban and he says you know that your wife's name shouldn't rhyme you know you shouldn't pick a wife with the same last name it's probably your kinfolk you know you can see it all the sons of Israel here where their family tree all comes back together between Jacob and Rachel and her sisters which their father was Laban and his mother was Rebecca and so this entire family all came from Bethuel. They all had the same grandfather. The old family tree kind of growed back together here. Keep it in the family. And that's what the beginning of that book was about. You know, Le Laban welcomed his nephew as the young man and, and set him the stipulation of seven years labor to have his daughters. He got both his daughters and the hired help. And he went into all of them. And then he ripped him off and ran away. When he got caught, he built a hinge and made a covenant. And you can watch it in that movie where he says, you know, when you're looking for a wife, you know, find one that doesn't have the same last name. So let me end this with an ancient painting of Confucius, Moses, and Muhammad. So it's pretty easy to see Confucius here. And Moses is the one with the horns, and Muhammad is the one you don't get to see. I'm starving to death. I gotta go find some groceries. Alright, I'm gonna cut this off here. Good day. <laughs>